Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Ralph. Uh, Ralph is my Lincoln uh, Tombstone uh, welder here. It uh, used to be an AC welder, but uh, after about uh, $15 in modifications and uh, yeah, messing around, probably about 45 minutes of actual work time, I was able to convert this old Tombstone welder to burn DC uh, welding rods and uh, kind of add as an added feature uh, the lugs, the way that they're situated. If I ever felt like going back to AC uh, welding, uh, it's really easy. Just remove two bolts and uh, basically uh, add the uh, connections back uh, to the AC uh, polarity and uh, you can go back to welding your uh, AC rods. Uh, but uh, uh, very rarely would you want to do that after burning nice smooth DC rods, but uh, there are people that uh, 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 want to burn some uh, DC rods out of one of these AC machines, and I found a way to do it real cheap. Um, this uh, right here is uh, the diode bridge. Uh, it comes out uh, of the machine as AC output, just like normal. comes through here, and uh, the polarity changes. Uh, this is now the negative pole of the DC output. This is the positive pole of the DC output. Um, you lose uh, probably a, a small amount of voltage going in the forward direction because you are going through a rectifier. Um, I would uh, have to expect that um, the DC uh, amperage is uh, going to be uh, slightly higher. You're going to have to set it up probably one notch from where you might normally do it. Uh, for example, if you normally weld it at 90 amps, uh, you might want to put it up to 100. Um, one thing that will happen uh, is the duty cycle probably drops significantly, um, I would think. Um, these cables aren't very thick, and they're used to uh, half of uh, the load being carried by each one of them. Well, when you put it in the DC bias, uh, basically one cable is going to do most of the work and the other one is just there to complete the circuit. Um, if you weld two minutes out of ten, you're not going to hurt anything. You could probably go a little bit further than that. Um, this particular uh, rectifier bridge is rated for uh, uh, 400 amps at uh, 1600 volts, uh, so it's more than double overkill. Um, I added my own heat sink to the top of this, which is a bunch of aluminum fins. Um, I put some uh, goop on the back side of it, some, uh, uh, it's a heat sink compound, and uh, it just helps to transfer the heat from the rectifier to this aluminum plate. Um, I went ahead and also drilled um, an air hole through the cabinet on the back side of this, hoping that uh, some of the air would get sucked through, uh, but it's a pretty generous heat sink on this. I think it should stay relatively uh, cool as long as I don't abuse it. It uh, should work just fine. Um, uh, just in case you guys never seen uh, the inside of a back of a welder, I'll go ahead and uh, turn it around. And basically just a few sheet metal um, screws that hold on uh, two covers. This cover is oriented in the top and this is basically where the uh, fan pulls air through and gets exhausted through here. This cover basically covers up everything else and uh, holds where the fan is. single phase unit and uh, they're supposed to put out 225 amps. Um, I really don't know what the output would be in DC, but um, uh, some of the other machines that I, I've seen, they say 160 amps or so. And um, you, you could probably burn some 532 rod without much difficulty at 160 amps. Um, but other than that, um, they're quite uh, robust on the inside of it. Uh, a lot of copper in here. Cables, um, if you are going to uh, a 
attempt this myself. Um, basically, uh, these are four aught uh, uh, copper lugs. You could probably get those at the hardware store. Um, I didn't have the fancy sledge tool here at the house. So uh, basically what I did was I found a, a sturdy iron block and um, I just beat the crap out of it and uh, put a couple of dimples on this side and one on the back side to keep these uh, cables from pulling out and uh, I don't think they're going anywhere. Um, if you have the crimpers, by all means use them. Uh, I did not and uh, these uh, I've done battery cables like that before and they seem to last for how long? Uh, I don't know, it'll probably outlast me. But um, what I will do is um, I'll do a uh, test on this uh, output um, with some uh, E6010 and uh, see how she performs. 